Hi, my name is Kawan. My name is Michael Lucero. My name is Vitero Valdez. I'm Joseph Raglan. My name is John Lopez. I look forward to telling you guys about my journey. I'd like to share with you not to be afraid to hire a felon. What if people with criminal records could increase the number of skilled tradespeople in the manufacturing industry? Hi, I'm Joseph Raglan here with Rise Up Industries in San Diego, California, where I'm senior member in the CNC Machine Operating Apprenticeship Program. Welcome to the second episode of Breaking the Cycle. Thanks for watching and coming along with us on this journey. In this video, you get to hear about my fast approaching and exciting leap into the career field of CNC machining and programming. You'll learn step by step how to set up and run production using dual vices. You'll also learn why people with criminal records can be assets to your company and how to sort through potential hires. There's a large population with criminal records who aren't being considered for employment. Finding these applicants who are as hungry for their success as they are for the company's success means finding employees who will add value to your company. If you'd like to skip around, check out the time steps in the description below and be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss more videos. Before so, as you can see here, we do have our vices, our dual vices. What's going to happen is I have all of my tools listed. Um, I have them already laid out. I've um, tightened them down to the appropriate length needed uh, in the collets and tool holders. I'm going to load those into the machine. Um, as you can see, I have my tool setter here. So it gets to set my tools and probe my tools. Um, automatically um, I don't have to do those manually and then my vices as you can see we have the first vice with the raw stock um, and this is the second vice um, containing G56 57 and then the third vice containing G58 and G59 first thing I want to do is get these tools out of the way so I want to load them into the machine I have them already uh, lined up in sequential order from 1 through 16. 16 would be the helicopter fan that you see in there. Um, and so now we begin with tools 1 through 15. approximate length is let me double check here three inches two hundred thousandths now I don't need to be exact it's an approximate length so I just want to get close so three point two is my approximate length there we go. Approximate diameter would be about two hundred thousandths, or excuse me, two and a half. So to make sure the computer knows the diameter um, for it to spin and be picked up on the tool setter, let's go down to our next rotating tool should be tool five so let's pull up tool five so let's go six inches and I'll do the same with all rotating tools as I finish up with all the rotating tools uh, the dovetail cutter is my last one um, that is now set and I will move forward with now the automatic uh, tool pro where they will set themselves off of the tool setter
And so now since our tools are in and our tools are set, we're now gonna move on to probing our parts and finding our work offset. I wanna check to make sure that my parts are up against the stop. The stop allows me to replace these parts once they're done with new parts and it gives us a consistent placement or location of the parts every single time we load them. I'm gonna call up my tool probe so that I can probe my parts. I have now called up my probe, so I'm going to use my probe to touch off and find the area or the location on the part that would be known as my work offset or my datum and that gives us the location of my origin so this would be my g54 excuse me here and then this would be my g55 what i want to do since i'm finding a corner is i want to find a probing action that correlates or that would simulate the part that I have. The outside corner, I can find both my X and my Y simultaneously. So I am in my work offset 54. D corresponds to the corner, the outer corner that I'm trying to find, which would be my front left corner. I'm actually looking for one, so that's correct. On my X, so I just want to be off of the part about half an inch, and then in my Y, I also want to do about half an inch. For my Z, I'm going to come down about three tenths of an inch. My x-axis and my y-axis values have now been changed. Now I'm going to set the z-axis for my G54 work offset. I will go to single surface down about 3 tenths of an inch, so negative 0.3. I want to handle jog my probe right above my part. So now as you can see, there's a value in my Z axis for my work offset, my G54. Move right along to G55. I'm gonna repeat the same thing that I did for G54. So I've just completed the probing of all of my work offsets. I have work offsets occupied from G54 all the way through G59. So here, program G54, G55. I use these finished parts to um, program my G56, 57, 58, and 59 on. Um, and this is the way that I put them in to probe them. Like so. This was 57. That was 58. I start off with here for 56, or 57. Here for 58. And then I use them over here for... Fifty-eight and fifty-nine. Fifty-eight and fifty-nine. Now, my work offsets are complete. Uh, my tools have been set. I've made all of my adjustments that I needed to make concerning the um, offsets within both of my tools 
and also my work so now I am going to run the graphics so that I can get a visual of what's being run I have uploaded the program from the thumb drive and now I will run my graphics you want your graphics to give you a visual and it gives you an understanding of where your parts are the cuts that are being made and if you're gonna have any alarms or not so I pull up my graphics and I hit cycle start to run them and it takes me through and completed with no alarms so I can begin to run my part I just completed my graphics which means that I have the okay to start running my parts I have three dual vices the first vice I have my raw stock my raw stock is clamped down and I'm going to cut uh, a contoured path into uh, this block of material um, and put a borehole inside of it. This is the underside. This underside will be cleaned up. Uh, it up will also be milled out. Uh, and then in the same bore feature, um, another hole um, will be contoured uh, or milled out. And that's using a separate tool. Over here, you're going to have uh, a feature being milled out. Um, it's a uh, it's a little bit of uh, a gap that they're cutting into uh, the side of the fixture. You have three operations happening uh, simultaneously uh, in one run and we get to start from the beginning. So as we begin And there you have it. The question I'd like to close with is, can people with criminal records be good employees? There are some employers who will not hire people with criminal records. That's been my experience coming out of prison there were a few companies that i applied for had interviews with second and even third interviews they liked all of my qualifications they in some instances thought i was overqualified everything was great until they found out that i had been incarcerated one instance i actually had a manager tell me that i was not given the job because of my criminal record some of the concerns that employers have when hiring people with criminal records are valid. Showing up on time, uh, does this person take directions well? Is this person sociable and able to work well with others? Is this person combative? The same can be said, however, for people without criminal records and their lack of integrity or work ethics on the job. The question is, how do you find that person who does have those work ethics and is willing to do all they can to add value to your company. Let's talk to Dustin and Kamisi to explore this question. Here we are with Dustin, who is the machine shop manager, uh, and he's in charge of hiring and deeming who's fit to be a part of the program and 
work around all of us here in the machine shop. And we also have Kamisi, who is our newest member in the program. Dustin, I want to ask you, as someone who's in an opportunity or in the position to give opportunities to people with criminal records, what is it that sticks out about people, in particular someone like Kamisi, that says, yes, they can be valuable to the company? Um, so I think th one of the biggest things that sticks out is is whether a person has um, has gotten to that point in their life where they have truly made that change. And uh, it's, it's no exception to Comisi or to yourself where um, when you make that change and you're willing to do the work on yourself to continue with that and you know I think that's what I you know what what we saw in Comisi um, obviously his humility is unbelievable is and then you know that starts the ball rolling and then once they come in to rise up you know we can uh, assess work ethic you know willingness to learn uh, commitment you know all those things come but having that humility making that switch at some point in your past is probably the biggest um, at least for what I look for uh, in anybody that comes in here so. thank you Dustin and Kamisi for you can you share shed a little light on what it was like um, making that change making that observation uh, about yourself and saying this needs to happen whether it happened while you were incarcerated or after you're incarcerated can you share with us a little bit about what's necessary to be reliable for your employers whether it's here or even in your construction job that you do um so to answer your question i would say that for me in my my life uh it, it was a tough lesson that I had gained through uh, serving a life sentence. Uh, and uh, I still kept bumping my head after getting that life sentence. Um, I knew I wanted change in my life, but wasn't committed to making a plan and executing. So I think once I had the right support under me um, and actually started laying out the plan, instead of just you know doing the the, the, the lip lip service um, it slowly but surely started uh, taking form and uh, there was a lot of uncomfortable or foreign um, circumstances and, and things that was happening but uh, I figured the same way I, I was dedicated to dysfunction addiction and, and, and the criminal lifestyle if I can take that same type of mentality and just apply it to today, mm -hmm. who knows where it's gonna go? And I committed to that, and, and I'm still committed to that. So uh, so far, it, it, it's been working. You know, not to say it hasn't had its uh, ups and downs or whatnot. I think I think that's life. It's just being able to see past the moment. And if I am feeling uncomfortable, I'll, I'll sit in it just to experience that. And, and that's that's what it is. It's it's about adjusting in my life today. Um, I had an unhealthy thing before where I felt if somebody didn't see it my way, it was a threat. But today, I, I, I get it today. It's all right if somebody don't have the same view as me. It's all right. I'm going to be all right. Um, but just like I got blessed with this chance to, uh, with, with Rise Up, uh, I'm going to take full advantage of it and I'm gonna continue to press see, and see what uh, God got in store for me with it. You know? That's right. You know? We'd love to hear from you. How has your company been able to look beyond the criminal record and discern a potential hire's viability? Drop a comment below. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for our next episode, episode three coming to you next month. Peace.